Hey everyone, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat, and I'm talking today with Deanna. Hello. Hello. It's great to have you. And for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Nice to meet you. Thank you for inviting me. So my name is Diana Birkelbach. Um, I'm from Germany. I'm here uh, since 24 years already, uh, originally coming from Romania. Uh, so if you know Dracula Castle, I, I live about 30 kilometers from there. I live oh, uh, I, back then. Is the um, country as dark and, and uh, as it is in all the movies? <laughs> it's just portrayed? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. Uh, it's very light and very, very welcoming uh, people. And uh, it's actually a, a ski, a ski. I don't know how, how you ski. pronounce yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's in the mountain. And... Um, yeah, that's uh, it's a very nice place to to have the holidays. Oh, very nice. But um, as I said, I'm I'm in Germany since 24 years. Uh, my husband is a German, so I've moved here. And uh, yeah, I um, I work for Orbis in in Germany um, since 22 years. So almost oh, wow. my whole life. Congratulations. Yes. Uh, thanks. <laughs> I know you, um, you being 24 years old. I mean, that's a long time to start no, working at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My second life started yeah. since I moved to Germany, right? <laughs> yeah. Great. Um, yeah. So the whole life. Um, yeah. So I started to develop uh, with Dynamics 1.2. So from mm. the beginning. I, yeah. I'm a web developer, uh, made some, some uh, web programming before. And uh, starting with the first version of, of Dynamics, and after that, uh, following all the all the path uh, to all the version of Dynamics uh, CRM and Power Platform, and uh, of course, now I'm very passionate about the programming part mm -hmm. uh, of Power Platform. So basically, uh, PCF. Um, I make a lot of. Um, um, in the community forum, uh, you can you can find me uh, answering question uh, because I'm very passionate about uh, PCF part. And uh, yes, uh, second time MVP, and that's I think that's all. Yeah, congratulations. No, I, I you know having attended uh, the Microsoft partner events, so Microsoft Inspire and Ignite, of course, uh, those types of events. It was always frustrating to see. Uh, the the lack of support and expansion of Dynamics. Microsoft made some uh, early on. Uh, Microsoft made some acquisitions and expanded out the Dynamics platform. Of course, Power Platform is taking off, so it's very exciting to see the growth. And some people aren't aware of how much Dynamics is. That whole space is really growing. Not just the Power Platform, but Dynamics 365. Uh, it, it's really gaining ground on its competitors, which is exciting to see. And then, of course, the power platform, which is just exploding within the community and tremendous opportunity uh, around that. So it's exciting to see that. So I see that, yeah, you have your uh, profiles, the PCF lady. Do you have, do a bunch of other things around community and out on YouTube around that brand? Yeah, YouTube too. Um, but uh, basically, I, I so my passion is writing blogs. Um, that's the part. Uh, I think um, making videos about how to program are um, doesn't bring you very far. So from from the beginning, I like uh, watching videos myself when I mm -hmm. want to learn something. When when it's about coding, I think the best is uh, to to have a blog or uh, the GitHub repository. Have a look yourself, uh, right. stuff like that. So I'm I'm more on, on that direction. Well, that's so you could talk about it all you want, and you can share examples of that. But people, when you're talking about coding, they want to see the code, they want to see the script, they want to see the examples and work through it. Uh, yeah. So, exactly. well, so what was your path to becoming an MVP? Um, hard to say. <laughs> so I'm, I'm in this uh, area since a lot of years. Uh, I just did my job <laughs> uh, trying to stay on the age, but I wasn't looking outside. But I think it's what the, the growth of, uh, of Power Platform, actually, because in the beginning, you, you heard a lot, um, the citizen developer, 
and you don't mm -hmm. need a developer anymore. And was the point where I started to look, is that really true? Uh, because as a developer, you know what you did before and you start to think, how will you ever do that with low code? Uh, there is a little more than that that you, you, uh, you could do or you need to do. And uh, there was the point, so uh, there was no, no idea of fusion development back then. So mm -hmm. um, I started uh, to, to say, okay, so there is a lot more there and I don't read a lot about that. Uh, so I got to do myself uh, some some something in that direction. And uh, it was the first time I, I saw the PCF, so perhaps component framework, mm -hmm. uh, the the base part of Power Apps, so the, the building bricks, if I can say it like this. Mm -hmm. And it was the point where it makes sense again that uh, you can do both. You can do low code, you can do pro dev, you can mix and it's it's a it's a very a good advantage of having both um but uh yeah so i starting to to write some blogs that was the starting point there are a lot of questions from customers uh and partners around the world on this this topic of uh, like what is what does that actually look like like the low code no code the blending with uh with our our developers and and some solutions are very simple. And, and a lot of the ideas of the low to no code is that, hey, anybody, business users can go in and very quickly automate different aspects of their job. But when you start, what inevitably happens with a lot of those solutions, somebody in the organization higher up says, that's fantastic. We need everybody to be able to go and use that. And, and then they find out that, well, the way that you built it may not scale the way that we need to be an enterprise supported. Um, and what is our what are our governance practices around all of these citizen development efforts? You know, is can we support this? What if somebody who built twenty of those then leaves the company? Like, what happens? Is this a supportable model? So that idea of, you know, how do we bridge that gap between, you know, a, a user generated automations and what we need to support within the enterprise and the governance around that is a really hot topic right now. Uh, definitely. I'm not that much in the governance. <laughs> I'm more, I'm more in the pro dev part. Uh, as uh, in the past, I wasn't that good uh, in, 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 so I wasn't in consultants before uh, that too. So developing. So I thought that's the point I'll never understand to the end. So just have an idea. It's enough for me. Uh, there are colleagues who are uh, taking care of that part, uh, but yes, it's it's very important. But also from as a developer from point of view, when you start and decide where you take the the uh, low code and where you have to go to to pro code, um, it's it's pretty tough decision. And yeah. uh, there are so many possibilities. Um, uh, you need, I think, you need a lot of experience to uh, to make the right decision and maybe there is not the right decision because uh for for a lot of solution you can you can go with a lot of ways i mean is did uh, so since you've been with your company for a long time i mean how did you guys handle that i mean is there so how do you manage that the governance well i mean yeah or, so or from the... your perspective <laughs> not necessarily like the governance the program mm -hmm. player over the top of it um but i mean did you look at it from a i don't know more of a programmatic, I guess that's a back way, back to a way of saying the governance around that. But I mean, how, how did you approach that? What's been your experience? Yeah. Um, it, it depends. Yeah. <laughs> it depends from a problem to the other. Yeah. Um, I, I think there it's not the right answer for everything, but, um, um, we, we take a look together to, so a pro dev and a low coder and a consultant, and uh, we decide where is the point where low code is pushing the limit, because that's the point will be hard to maintain and will hard to to have a good performance. Mm -hmm. And there are some points where you say that's not the right way. You have to go to Azure, or there there are so many possibilities. Uh, and uh, yes, we we decide from from problem to the other and experience. Yeah, that's, I think that's the key is having the conversation 
around it as a governance guy. I mean, that's the, something that I think is lacking from a lot. There's not, there's not one right, you know, programmatic approach to this. It's the key is that there's dialogue that's happening and that you adjust based on what's needed by solution. But yeah, anyway, I, off that topic, but uh, the, um, so what are you passionate about right now with all the announcements that, you know, with, we, we have Ignite that's going on this week. Um, so what things are you excited about in the roadmap? Of course, PCF. <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah. uh, I saw last week uh, already that in the documentation that the PCF will be available also for portals as a data set PCF. So a uh, big announcement there. Um, but uh, I think there are a lot more to come. I'm not sure what's, uh, what Ignite will bring to us, but uh, I'm also, um, I like a lot the idea of um, Converge app. So one app, uh, you don't have to decide from the beginning if, if it's a Canvas app or a model-driven app. It's just an app and it, you take the, the best of both words. And also from the programming perspective, um, I do make a lot of PCF, so pro code, but uh, I, I love the possibility that low code it's bringing me to customize that PCFs. Because in the past we have to make some tricks to define some, some uh, configuration uh, in JSON or XML or stuff like that. And now we have the possibility to use the platform and configure like that. Uh, and that's, um, that's very maintainable that way. So custom pages, I uh, look forward to see what's bringing to, to, the, uh, to the programmer or to the maker. And of course, PCF, that would be the, the most interesting part for me. Well, like anybody that's watching this uh, post Ignite, make sure you go in and check out. There's a number of places to go and look. Um, certainly go out to Microsoft Tech Community and search on you know, Ignite 2022 announcements for Power Platform. If you'd made that as your you know, your search, you know, you'll find, I'm sure, plenty of the blog posts and all the official announcements. And I think that they're doing a, I don't know if you follow the uh, the book of news links that come out of these shows. That's always, if you go to, you know, Microsoft Ignite 2022 book of news, uh, the, that should also be published out um, that will, you know, encapsulate all the announcements across all of the different product areas. Well, last question for you, uh, Deanna, is that, you know, so what kind of, what's your involvement with the, the local regional community? Um, I don't speak that much. <laughs> so uh, I don't make a lot of uh, activities in, in that direction. Uh, I just, I'm actually... Um, how can I say a virtual MVP uh, born in the time of the, vir <laughs> in yeah. the virtual time. <laughs> uh, so it's not that much locally that I do. Uh, I speak to some conferences, um, uh, but uh, yeah, in that, in that direction, um, not that much local. local. No, that's uh, I always say that you know, be, being coming an MVP. It's a, it's a black box. I mean, Microsoft, they're, they're all, all so it's not like there's a checklist of things that if I do these 10 things, I will get become a Microsoft MVP. It's it's different, and so there are people that, you know, back in the day, where a hundred percent of their contributions were in forums. They never spoke. They didn't write content. They weren't creating videos, but they were almost every day in there answering questions, technical questions within the forums. There are those still those kinds of MVPs that are out there. Though there are some that are like me. I'm all, more on the marketing, the front end side. I've been a product evangelist. I'm not an engineer. Uh, and so I rarely demo things, um, depending on what I'm talking about. Uh, but I write a lot, create a lot of videos, speak at a lot of events and things. So there's all different types of, of uh, contributions. And that, I think that's the nice part because you can pick what's best for you, what you can do the best, and you still have the chance to, uh, to, make, to make a difference. Exactly. Yeah, it takes takes all types. It takes a village to build a community. <laughs> yeah, that that's uh, so. I have I have full respect for somebody who uh, is able to do that. But I think you have to to have some talent in or organizing stuff. That's not me. So um, yeah, everybody. I like, <laughs> I, I like your your point too. That's like you, you need to like you do you. I'll do me. You do you. 
you know, like it, it, it just it, to be yourself. And I think that's a, it's an important part of this as well is that um, like when I talk about community, not meaning to like put you on spot that, that you're not presenting and doing that, the kind of things is like you, the fact that you're blogging and creating videos and participating, like that's all community activities. Um, yeah. And you don't have to be out front. In fact, one of my favorite MVPs, I won't name him because he's a shy person, but he abhors doing public speaking of any kind. He does everything behind the scenes. But when the product teams at Microsoft have questions and others within the industry, like we reach out to this MVP and ask those deep technical questions. It's always, I always like to identify those, who does Microsoft go to to answer questions about their own products? And if it's an external person, like an MVP, that's somebody that you should get to know. They, they usually know a lot about their their topic yeah exactly well Deanna, yeah, so, really, um, oh go ahead also uh, no just want to say a uh, community forum it's also a direction where i do a lot of stuff and uh, as i said just i think only about two or three uh conferences a year uh because i do prepare a lot for them so yep. it's every time something new but the rest are blogs videos and and stuff like that yes well, hopefully as things get back underway, events are starting to fill up again. I'm, I'm happy to see the in-person events happening and hope to get out to your part of the world uh, soon. I know I'll be over there a couple times this next year, but Deanna, people want to find out more about you or follow you. What are the best ways to reach you? So um, the, the Twitter or LinkedIn, it's Deanna Birkelbach. And um, the same uh, about Dynamics BCF Lady, and you can find my blogs or my YouTube videos. And the same in the community forum, Diana Birkelbach. I be there to answer your question in pro dev part. Excellent. And of course, I'll have all of her uh, social contact information within the blog post and out on the YouTube video. So, Diana, really appreciate your time connecting today. It was nice to chat to you. Thank you. We'll talk to you soon. Wow.